Welcome back to Madman Review. Have you heard of this topic that stirred quite the buzz in the Golden State? It's the retarded, <clears throat> I mean, intricate web of laws surrounding high capacity magazines, particularly those acquired during the whirlwind known as California's Freedom Week. For gun owners navigating the sunny but legally corrupted landscape of California, Understanding the nuances of these regulations isn't just a matter of staying informed. It's a critical aspect of responsible ownership. And even to us who don't live in California, it pays to be aware. Who knows when our home state could become a communist state? In this video, we'll dissect the historical context, slicing through the layers of current red tape, sidestepping potential legal pitfalls, and even casting our gaze towards the horizon to speculate on future legal shifts. So buckle up, fellow madmen. Whether you're a California gun owner, a curious bystander in the realm of firearm laws, or just someone passionate about your 2A rights, this video will shed light on the perplexing legal drama surrounding Freedom Week magazines. And remember, forewarned is forearmed. What the hell is Freedom Week? For those who have no idea, we'll rewind the clock and get into some history that sets the stage for our whole discussion. Our story kicks off with Duncan versus Bracera. In this legal showdown, the debate was all about high-capacity magazines and whether the state's restrictions on them squared up with the Second Amendment. In comes Judge Roger T. Benitez, who in 2019 threw a massive curveball in this ongoing legal tussle. He issued an injunction that momentarily hit pause on California's laws against owning, buying, or selling so-called high-capacity mags. This pivotal moment led to what's famously known as Freedom Week. It's like a brief, fleeting period in April 2019 when the usual rules were off the table. Californians had a one-week window where they could legally buy, sell, and stock up on high-capacity magazines without the usual legal hurdles. It was like the Black Friday sale, but for gun magazines. And it was all thanks to the injunction. Now, why does this one week matter so much? Well, it created a unique group of magazine owners. If you snagged your high-capacity mags during this specific week, you're holding what we might call a golden ticket. These magazines are considered legally acquired thanks to the specific time frame of Freedom Week. It's like a legal safe zone in the midst of California's otherwise strict gun laws. But here's where it gets tricky. Owning these magazines is one thing. How you use them, where you take them, and what you pair them with, that's a whole different ballgame, filled with legal nuances and potential pitfalls. And that's precisely why understanding the backdrop of Duncan versus Becerra and the implications of Freedom Week is crucial. So yeah, keep this historical context in mind as we navigate through the complex world of high-capacity magazine laws. The Pitfalls of Legal Ownership of These Magazines Okay, let's break down the whole deal with owning these high-capacity magazines post-Freedom Week and clear up some of the fog around this topic. If you manage to grab some of these magazines during that special week, the law views you differently than someone who missed the boat. You're in a unique category because, as per the injunction, and the legal wrangling that followed, those magazines you got are yours to keep. Legally. But here's where the waters get a bit murky. There's a whole lot of confusion out there, not just among everyday folks, but even among those who wear the badge. You might have a magazine from Freedom Week, totally legit in your eyes but run into a law enforcement officer who's got a different understanding of the law. It's not that rare to hear stories of people getting into a bit of a tangle because what's clear as day to some is a total mystery to others. And it's not just about having these magazines in your possession. The real brain teaser comes into play when you start talking about using them. 
Owning them? Sure, that's one thing. But slotting one into the firearm, that's where you step into a whole different arena of legal specifics. The law draws a pretty bold line between what's considered a featureless gun versus one with a fixed magazine. And mixing that up with your high-capacity magazine can fast-track you into hot water. I'll talk about these two types of guns in a bit. For now, and just to add another layer to this, even if you're doing everything by the book, there's still a chance you might face a situation where your legally obtained magazines are seen as a nuisance. You could be asked to part ways with them. It's a bit of a head-scratcher, right? So, in essence, while owning these high-capacity magazines from Freedom Week puts you in a legally protected zone, the road doesn't end there. Understanding the intricate dance between possession, usage, and the specific firearm you pair your magazine with is crucial. It's about piecing together the full picture so you don't accidentally step over a line you didn't even see. Featureless versus fixed magazine guns. What gives? Just as another bit of a backdrop, when you're talking about firearms in California, especially in the context of high-capacity magazines, you really need to understand the difference between featureless and fixed magazine guns. It's not just gun talk. It's legal talk, too. So, featureless guns, they're kind of like the plain Jane of firearms. They don't have those extras that make a gun look more intimidating, like a pistol grip a collapsible stock, or a flash hider. Think of it as the basic model. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Now, the cool part about featureless guns is that you can use detachable magazines with them, including those high-capacity ones you snagged during Freedom Week, without crossing into the danger zone of legal issues. On the flip side, you've got fixed magazine guns. These are the ones where the magazine is, well, (laughs) <laughs> fixed, meaning you can't just press a button and drop the mag out. You've actually got to partially disassemble the gun to change the magazine. And here's the kicker. If your fixed magazine gun can accept more than 10 rounds, you're wandering into the territory of what California labels as assault weapon. And that's a label that can land you in prison. Per California Penal Code 30605, If you own a so-called assault weapon in the state and you're not covered by the specific exemptions in the law, you could be looking at some serious time behind bars. We're talking up to a year cooling your heels in county jail, or it might even be a stiffer sentence under Section 1170H. Bottom line, if you live in this communist state, it's not a spot you want to find yourself in. So it's super important to know what's what when it comes to your firearms and the law. High-risk scenarios to be aware of. For legal owners of high-capacity magazines, certain situations can quickly spiral into a legal minefield. It's not just about what you own, but also about how and where you use it. Let's break down some high-risk scenarios that could trip up even the most well-intentioned gun owner. First up, the type of firearm you pair with your high-capacity magazine is a big deal. If you're using a featureless gun, again, bare bones, no tactical frills, you're generally in the clear to use your Freedom Week high-capacity mags. However, if you slot one of those mags into a fixed magazine gun, you're playing with fire. California enforces rigid regulations concerning fixed magazine firearms. Again, if you're caught with a high-capacity magazine inserted in a fixed mag gun, you can find yourself facing at least a year behind bars. But it's not just about your choice of firearm. Even if you're following the rules, you could find yourself in a sticky situation with law enforcement. Concealed carry and county-specific restrictions. Let's say you get pulled over or have some interaction with a local sheriff, and they somehow spot your high-capacity magazines. 
If they're not clued up on the intricacies of Freedom Week, or they suspect your mags weren't legally obtained, they might just confiscate them on the spot. Sure, you might not end up in cuffs if you've done everything right, but watching your mags get taken away is no picnic. It's frustrating, and it can feel like you're being penalized even though you've been plain by the rules. When it comes to concealed carry firearms with high-capacity magazines, the plot thickens, especially in California. You might think that having a CCW license gives you free reign, but the truth is, it's more like a patchwork of rules that can vary widely from one county to another. For instance, even if state law gives the thumbs up to your high-capacity magazines from Freedom Week, your local sheriff might have a different playbook. They can set their own rules for what you're allowed to carry while you're packing concealed. So before you step out with your concealed carry firearm and those high-capacity mags, double-check your county's specific restrictions. Interstate Travel and Importation Legalities Oh, and as if those county-specific restrictions aren't enough, venturing out of California with your high-capacity magazines can turn into a legal roller coaster the moment you decide to come back with those mags. That's because crossing back into California with those can be seen as importing them, which is a big no-no under current laws. So imagine you're heading to Nevada with your high-capacity mags. The laws in that state are more relaxed when it comes to mag capacity, but the moment you drive back into California with those same magazines, you've technically imported them, and that's where you could find yourself in hot water. You got a couple of options. Either leave those high-capacity magazines out of state, or make sure you're only carrying magazines that meet California's legal requirements when you cross back over. Ugh. He's communist. Future Legal Uncertainties in Court Cases When it comes to high-capacity magazines, the legal landscape is about as steady as a house of cards in a breeze. Cases like Duncan versus Becerra are still in the mix, and the way these legal battles pan out could totally reshape the game. We're talking about a future where, with the bang of a judge's gavel, the magazines you own can flip from being totally legit to completely off-limits. Well, or the other way around. Imagine waking up one day to find out that the rules have changed while you were sleeping. That's the kind of shift we're looking at, depending on how these court cases shake out. Could mean that restrictions loosen up and getting high-capacity magazines becomes less of a headache, or it could go the opposite direction, tightening the grip on what's allowed. The takeaway here? Keep your ear to the ground. In a landscape where the rules can pivot on a dime, staying in the loop isn't just smart, it's essential. Keep an eye on these court cases and what they mean for your rights and your gear. In the world of firearm laws, being informed isn't just power, it's protection. Closing Thoughts We've covered a lot of ground today, but the journey doesn't end here. The legal landscape for firearms and high-capacity magazines is always shifting, and staying updated is not just smart, it's essential for every responsible gun owner. This isn't just about keeping your collection in check, it's about being a well-informed member of the firearm community. And hey, I know my lane. I'm here to share what I know and spark the conversation, but I'm no lawyer. So if you've got some legal chops or insights into the whole puzzle, don't keep it to yourself. Jump into the comments, share your knowledge, correct me if I've missed the mark, or add to the discussion. It's all about pooling our info and looking out for one another. Let's keep this conversation alive and kicking. Stay sharp, stay informed, and most importantly, stay involved. Whether it's diving deeper into the laws, sharing your updates, or just spreading the word, every bit counts.